Good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremlin News at 5 tonight. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Whitney has the evening off. We start tonight with a major update out of Olympia. Just this afternoon, Washington's bill to ban the sale of assault style weapons cleared both the House and the Senate. It bans the sale, manufacture and import of assault weapons in Washington state. The bill has been bouncing back and forth between these legislative chambers in Olympia for weeks now, but now lawmakers have a version of the bill they both agree on. So here's what some legislators on both sides of the issue said on the House floor today. It is going to slow the proliferation of these mass gun violence incidents that have taken place in our schools in our grocery stores, in our neighborhood banks. This bill just makes our state and our country less safe because we're criminalizing the good men and women who are good law-abiding citizens. A final version of the bill is now headed to the governor's desk. Governor Inslee has said he plans to sign any version of the bill. Moments after the latest development, Governor Inslee tweeted out this message. It reads, quote, Washington does not and will not accept gun violence as normal. Banning the sale of assault weapons, our bill to enact training requirements and a wait period and a bill to improve accountability of manufacturers and retailers will save lives, unquote. We are continuing to ask the city of Spokane about efforts to move people out of the Cannon Street shelter and into the Trent shelter. The city's contract with the shelter operator at Cannon expires at the end of May, but people are already being moved. Grand 2's Amanda Rowley joining us live in the studio tonight to explain why. Amanda? Right now, the city of Spokane just can't afford to continue funding both the Trent Avenue and Cannon Street shelters. That's why the city is looking for other ways to use the Cannon Street shelter. The clock is ticking for people who are staying at the Cannon Street shelter to clear out. We're being told that we have to be out by next week. The city of Spokane says that's true, but there's more to it. The city's contract with the shelter operator at Cannon expires at the end of May, but people are already being moved. City spokesperson Brian Coddington says these steps are being taken early so that not everyone is moved at once. It's easier on both operator, but most importantly, it's easier on those who are transitioning from Cannon to track or to another location so that they can do it in an orderly fashion, a managed fashion. We've seen the Cannon Street shelter get cleared out abruptly. We're not going nowhere! This is video from nearly three years ago. The shelter's first operator sent guests on their way the day their contract ended. Dozens of people set up tents in Coeur d'Alene Park in Brown's edition. This time around, the city hopes to avoid a similar chaotic transition by moving people in phases weeks before the end of this contract. This week, City Council passed a resolution to turn Cannon into a respite facility, a space to help people with serious physical or mental illnesses. It's something Empire Health CEO Zeke Smith recently told City Council is a crucial need in the community, especially when it comes to clearing out Camp Hope. Some of the individuals have intensive uh, substance use issues that preclude them from uh, being able to participate at the shelters. Coddington wouldn't say outright if the mayor supports this idea, but he says there are other options on the table, including a detox facility or warming shelter. It's a matter of figuring out what's the most compatible use for that building, what's um, the cost to the city. The city of Spokane is facing a deficit of several million dollars to fund its homeless shelters. Changing the services at Cannon Street Shelter could mean outside funding instead of city dollars. Meantime, the Salvation Army will continue moving people from Cannon to the Trent Shelter each week leading up to May 31st. Now, city spokesperson Brian Coddington says there is enough space at the Trent shelter to take in those currently staying at the Cannon Street shelter. Amanda Rowley, Krem 2 News. In other top stories tonight, the Supreme Court has temporarily extended women's access to an abortion pill. The justices are still considering whether to allow restrictions on mifepristone to take effect while a legal challenge to the medication's FBA approval continues. Senator Patty Murray was joined by fellow Senate Democrats speaking about the latest developments within the courts. So you know what? We are here again. And as we wait for the Supreme Court, to give us a ruling on a truly terrifying lawsuit from Texas that has no basis in science or in facts. 
The justices have typically not been very lenient on cases where there doesn't seem to be legal standing for the challenges. To get a case into federal court, you have to show you have suffered some harm and have a stake in the case, and that may be tough to prove when the drug has already been on the market for more than two decades. Critics say allowing the Mifepristone ruling to stand may open the courts up to all kinds of new challenges. Meantime, here in Washington, Governor Jay Inslee recently bought a three-year supply at about $1.27 million. Now legislators are considering a bill, 5768, to let a state department sell those pills for $50 each to clinics. The bill did pass off the floor of the Senate last week and is now working its way through the House. All right, taking a break from the headlines to talk weather with Chief Meteorologist Jeremy Goo. Jeremy, another round of Grapple this afternoon here in Spokane, but you're saying that warmer weather is eventually heading our way, right? Eventually. I do have faith. You know, Mark, uh, grapple seems to be a point of contention with uh, a lot of our viewers. And it's always been a thing. It's just, as a meteorologist, I can't say wintry mix or small little snow pellets. I, yeah. I have to use the just technical Just say like term. Dippin' Dots falling from the sky. Yeah, so yeah. from now on, when I say Dippin' Dots, you can eat them. <laughs> don't eat them. Just don't. Even the snow that's not yellow, you just shouldn't eat. We can get into that later, but that's a pro tip. Anyway, let's talk showers. We did have a thunderstorm in Nez Perce County a little bit earlier. That has fallen apart. That was just north of Grangeville. That was looking pretty impressive, but really it's just kind of scattered pop-up showers on the radar, and that seems to be about the extent of it. Those will wind down once the sun goes down this evening, and by tomorrow we'll start to see cloud cover filter in during the second half of the day, and eventually overnight we'll see our next round of showers move in and take us into Friday morning. It looks weirdly similar to the one that we saw from Monday into Tuesday, and it's likely a lot of those same places wind up picking up snow that saw it Monday night into Tuesday morning. Sorry, it's just kind of the nature of the beast. Tomorrow morning also winds up looking quite a bit cooler. Temperatures once again down in the low 30s or upper 20s, very similar to what we saw this morning. So once again, freeze warnings in effect for the same places that saw them yesterday. We do have a shift in the weather pattern, and eventually that brings about warmer temperatures. I think Saturday we turn the corner. Sunday we see our next round of showers, but next week winds up looking a little bit warmer every day.